Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopists. In today's tutorial, let's look at how performing image segmentation using support vector machines or SVM for short. In uh, the last few tutorials, in fact, in the last tutorial, I introduced uh, the concept of support vector machines at a high level. You know, we discussed, uh, you know, how the algorithm actually works. But the previous few uh, videos, we performed image segmentation using random forest. Again, uh, the way we did this was uh, we took a training image and corresponding mask. And uh, for each of the labels in the mask, we extracted a whole bunch of features. Okay, and then we trained the random forest algorithm using these features and created a model and then used that model to segment, uh, well, first of all, that uh, the training images and then also to segment uh, any other images that uh, look very similar to the image that we have used for training. Okay, to summarize it, we have used random forest algorithm to generate a model using training images. Okay, and then that model got used for uh, segmenting other images. So in this tutorial, let's switch random forest with support vector machines. That's it. Okay, very simple exercise. Let's switch. Let's take the same code. I don't want to repeat exactly what I've done, you know, uh, in the last few videos. So please go through these videos in this uh, in this playlist. But let's simply switch the random forest part with support vector machines and see how the result looks like. And then, of course, we can compare both SVM and random forest to see which one is better for these type of image segmentation uh, uh, you know, tasks. So let's uh, directly jump into the code and uh, have a quick look at it. So here is the code that we have written to read an image, a trained image or a training image, and uh, also read a training mask, corresponding mask, and uh, extract features from the training image, and train an algorithm, in this case, random forest classifier, to create a model and then predict it. Okay, so just to show you this trained or training image that we have used looks somewhat like this. Okay, and the training mask looks like this. Okay, so on the left hand side, we have the original image. So let me actually uh, try to decrease the size to match the dimensions. So uh, on the left hand side is the training image. So we said, okay, this dark area is, uh, let's say, represented by blue here, the bright area represented in yellow, and this, uh, this, this uh, medium gray with some texture is represented by green, and red is this medium gray uh, that has no texture, okay, or very flat, relatively flat region. So uh, this is a training mask, and again, training mask is nothing but, of course, it's a segmented image, meaning all the pixels in the blue, uh, let's say, have a value of zero. All the pixels of red have a value of one. All the pixels in yellow have a value of two, and so on. So each region is corresponded by a unique uh, value. Uh, so so this is, uh, this is what... Uh, we started by reading in, right? So in this code, okay, uh, our input image or the training image is uh, uh, converted to the gray level image. And then we started off by creating an empty data frame that we sequentially filled with corresponding features that we extracted from this input image. The feature number one being the pixels from original image itself, right? So we actually took the actual image and we converted that to gray values, and then that gray value represents my original image. And then we took that image, initial, the actual uh, original image, and applied a whole bunch of filters. In this example, generated a whole bunch of Gabor filters, and then the filtered image pixels are added to the data frame, okay? And then we also applied traditional filters like Canny Edge and Roberts and Pruitt and Gaussians and so on, median, and we kept adding those to the data frame. And finally, this is uh, uh, obviously we need also to, <clears throat> uh, for each pixel, we need to at least label them. So that's where we actually uh, loaded the training image or a training mask, which is nothing but this colorful image that I showed you earlier. And then at every pixel now we have a label. Is it blue? Is it red? Is it yellow? Is it green? Well, I shouldn't use the color names, but is it zero, one, two, three, four? Right. So that those values are actually again appended or added, I should say, to the data frame. So now at the end of this, I have a data frame that's ready. 
okay? A data frame that has, uh, if you look up here, 42 columns, and the column names are original image, Gabor 1, Gabor 2, 3, 4, and all of these columns, with the last column being labels, okay? So now the data is ready for machine learning algorithm. And then we define that, okay, my Y is the column that's labeled label, okay? So that is my Y. Y is nothing but this is the, these are the values that we are trying to predict, right? Y is nothing but my labels. And X are all the independent variables. Y is the dependent variable that we are trying to predict. X is the independent variables, which is everything except for the column named label, which includes uh, the original image, the Gabor 1, Gabor 2, uh, median, Gaussian, all of this. All of these are used, uh, are part of my X. And then we split the data and uh, we used random forest. We imported the random forest classifier and then fit the model. And then we did the prediction and uh, reported the accuracy values. Okay. And uh, because random forest classifier reports the feature priorities or feature importances, uh, we, we, uh, we printed them out. Support vector machines doesn't do that. So I need to comment these out when we ch switch this from random forest to support vector machines. And uh, the, the model that we actually created here, we pickled it, meaning we saved it, I should say. And then we load that model to actually segment this image that we are uh, that we just uh, uh, used for training. Of course, that model can be used to segment other images, but this is the code that we have written in the previous tutorial. Again, I encourage you to watch the tutorial itself so you understand exactly every line uh, here. So now our task is to replace this random forest classifier. In fact, you see the result on the right hand side from uh, the random forest classifier. So we used 10 estimators and we got an accuracy of 98.1. In fact, let me go ahead and run this so you can see how fast it is. Uh, random forest is much faster compared to support vector machines, I should say. Okay, uh, I know this appears a bit slow. I'm recording this on my laptop. It takes, uh, you know, about, I would say like 20 seconds or so, which sounds very long, but uh, this is still pretty fast actually for training. Support vector machines, uh, I'll probably speed up the video when I, when I do that support vector machine uh, training, but it is, uh, it is an order of magnitude at least slower compared to random forest. Okay, so this is the uh, report uh, result that we got. Now, how do we switch this random forest with uh, support vector machines? So while that's running, let me go ahead and uh, comment these two off. I'm gonna leave everything as is, okay? The only thing I'm gonna change is the classifier itself. So I'm gonna comment that and I'm gonna comment the model, okay? And by the way, this is done. All, all you're seeing is that, okay, uh, we got 98.1% accuracy, and here is uh, how the final image uh, looks like once it's segmented. So now, uh, let's uh, let's use uh, uh, support vector machine. So it, you can import it from scikit-learn.svm, okay? From sklearn.svm, let's import linear SVC, okay? This is how you import your support vector machines. And now all we need to do is just apply it. That's it. Model equals to linear SVC. Okay. And then now we have to give how many iterations. Okay. So let me just say by default, if you don't provide this value, the maximum number of iterations is 100, I believe. But I'm going to just provide that anyway. Okay. So my model. I am uh, uh, initiating this model, and this is nothing but linear SVC. Previously, my model was random forest classifier, right? And the parameters that the random forest took was the number of estimators, uh, and then some seed for a random state, so it doesn't change every time you run it. But here, uh, linear SVC, I'm just gonna give, okay, 100 uh, num uh, iterations. Everything else I can keep, I believe, uh, the same, except, uh, Let's comment out this feature list. Like I said, uh, feature importance is not part of uh, support vector machines. So that's it. So let's go ahead and run this. So the way to implement uh, SVM, since it's so easy, you know, uh, in terms of implementing it, 
I encourage you to do both random forest and SVC to see to see how the results look like, to compare them and how fast is the computing time, right? And then pick the right one that works for your use case. Okay, so there you go. After all that time, uh, first of all, it says uh, lib linear failed to converge, increase the number of iterations. So apparently 100 iterations is not enough. And then it says that, okay, the accuracy is 93.9%, which sounds great, but if you look at this image, this is horrible. Okay, so let's actually compare these results later on, but first uh, let me change this number of iterations to 1000 and see what happens. Okay, let's run it. So there you go. Now we see slightly better result and it says 96.3% accuracy after all of that time, right? So now let's actually compare the results between random forest and 100 iterations for SVM, support vector machines, and then 1000 iterations, okay? So first let me open the original image so we can actually compare the results. And uh, here it is for, let's, uh, which one do we open? So let's open the SVM 100 iterations. Okay, I cleaned up this a bit. So here it is, and let me resize so we can actually compare. Okay, and let me bring the other, uh, let's see, 1000 iterations. So this is 1000 iterations. So first of all, you can see that uh, Actually, I think it's better if we compare it with the labeled image. I mean, sorry for the colors. We could have actually changed the colors, but uh, this blue is represented in dark blue here, and the red is represented in light blue. So don't be confused. Just look at these different regions. So the yellow, it did pretty good with 100 iterations and also with 1,000 iterations, right? It's the it's this green region where it actually struggled. It is green area. So not much. I mean, here it's represented in yellow. So we know that 100 iterations is ridiculous. I mean, this is not useful. This is not accurate at all. And now looking at 1000 iterations there, this is okay. Although still not as good as, uh, you know, uh, let me open random forest. So now we can actually see. So where is random forest? This is random forest with 10 estimators on the bottom. And I should also have 100 estimators random forest. So as you can see, random forest with one, uh, I mean, with 10 estimators is already pretty good. Much better than what I got with SVM, uh, 100 iterations or 1000 iterations. In fact, with 100 iterations, I'm not surprised it looks this way because it did not converge. Okay, so it, it didn't finish. So we increased it to 1000 and still it, it's not good. Maybe if I go to 10,000, it would be better, but then I would wait forever, you know, to uh, for uh, to get my result. Now, with random forest, this is like literally a few seconds, you know, uh, and with 10 estimators, it's already pretty good. Okay, in fact, I don't even see much of a difference between 10 estimators or 100 estimators. Okay, so, uh, well, I thought I opened 100 estimators. Just a second, so 100 estimators. Uh, but uh, either way, this is, uh, as you can see, random forest is definitely much better than support vector machines, as you can see here. And uh, at least for most of the image processing, you know, examples I've seen for my own work, not for just this video, uh, it. I mean, random forest seem to be much, much better uh, choice compared to any other algorithm out there. So this tutorial is about support vector machines, but I'm telling you that random forest is better than this. But other, uh, this is the only way we can learn by looking at how the result looks like for SVM. Okay, so uh, although that doesn't mean support vector machines is useless, I mean, for Pixel segmentation support vector machine is probably not the right choice, but if you have image classification, for example, uh, support vector machine actually does a very good job. So in the next tutorial, I'm gonna talk about how to classify your images, not just pixel segmentation, okay? Using uh, a technique or an approach called bag of words. Again, 
uh, you'll learn that in the next tutorial and for that we will be using support vector machines okay so think of next tutorial as an extension of uh, uh, this one so I hope you learned something from this tutorial if you like this video please go ahead and uh, like it uh, and uh, please subscribe to this channel it definitely keeps me encouraged to teach you more about image processing using Python thank you very much